Welcome to KubeCon EMEA 2021 and my lightning talk. I'm Rob Esker from NetApp. I'd like to offer, to the extent that I can within five minutes, a few of our observations from NetApp in our, our years of having worked with deployers and of course as practitioners ourselves. Um, a few things primarily from the lens of storage and data management that hopefully can inform how you look at and approach and operate Kubernetes. Let me just start with a little bit about NetApp. Uh, I mentioned or alluded to, you know, we worked with many thousands of customers since the inception. We contribute to the uh, storage SIGs, uh, data protection working group, and of course the container storage uh, inter interface specification as well. Um, you know, our customers brought us to the conversation. We use Kubernetes ourselves to power many of our cloud services. We'll have more to talk about on that uh, in actually the coming months. Uh, so this is not just a scenario of we're providing capabilities vis-a-vis -vis Kubernetes, but also building our own products based in part on Kubernetes. Um, so a little bit about, um, I guess, on the editorial end about Kubernetes. I, I'd offer um, that we have seen from our customers uh, kind of a realization or epiphany, process of epiphany, where there's, there's an understanding that Kubernetes is maybe not necessarily strictly just an evolution of more hypervisor VM-based uh, classic infrastructure as a service, that indeed it's a predominantly a desired state machine, uh, particularly useful for you know, automating scaling and you know, life cycle of applications. Um, mostly thought to be predicated on containers, uh, but actually not entirely confined to that when you look at things like Kubeberg. Uh, that said, it's, a, it's an important sort of calibration at the outset that there are some things that are a little bit different about Kubernetes than than what you might have expected from uh, a VM and its surrounding ecosystem as a runtime. So just to start with that. Uh, one of the things uh, in particular, uh, if you add kind of a time dimension to understand Kubernetes, is at the beginning it was really built of, can I take a quote unquote cloud native application, built of a control factor application model, which maybe didn't necessarily, uh, you know, really kind of thought that the only way to persist data was in an object. And, and can I deliver it? And of course it did that well, but that was a bit limiting in terms of the style and kind of computational problem for which Kubernetes could be applied. So uh, it was certainly the case that from the outset, we seek to engage to help in the community context evolve a more sophisticated construct, a la CSI, for accessing uh, distinguishing qualities of storage, not strictly it's an object here, but like I have something that I have multiple access modes to interact with, perhaps many writers against a common, uh, a common uh, um, byte range. Uh, there's different access modes that have evolved in Kubernetes for accessing um, data sets. There are, there's a notion of storage classes for which you can define uh, distinguishing capabilities that one application may demand versus another. And if, from a NetApp perspective, we have provided those capabilities in all of the public cloud, most recognizable public clouds in, the, in, a, in a variety of different services. We've wedded them to Kubernetes uh, with a project called Trident, and we built that into a new capability called Astra, which takes sort of an application-centric perspective of um, uh, delivering sophisticated persistence that's portable in the same way that a work or an actual application itself may be portable um, for Kubernetes from one place to another, whether it's across the public clouds or on-prem. You know, a few things I'd also offer, just kind of rapid fire style uh, in terms of, of things we've seen. Do not perceive that default security, you know, uh, intelligent defaults are necessarily uh, always accounted for vertically across the entirety of the stack. You know, secrets, are they in fact secret? Actually, no. Um, it, it, they're not the case. I encourage you to look at Kubernetes documentation. Uh, actually, by default, everything's stored as an unencrypted string. They can be retra uh, retrieved as plain text by anyone with, with you know, the necessary API access. Um, think about the underpinning persistent volumes and who has access to it and from what layer. So security is not necessarily a simple topic. Uh, I have heard uh, in the most recent Cloud Native Computing Foundation Governing Board meeting, only 6% of the folks who have attempted the CKS examination so far have passed it. Now that's early data that could change. The point is it's not a, a, it's not a simple topic. I do wanna make a quick plug. There's a ton of topics we'd love to engage with you on at NetApp's virtual booth here at KubeCon. And uh, thank you for the opportunity and your time. Have a great KubeCon.